I want to show you a recording that made me feel very passionate about the sounds of bearded seals. A uh, collaborator of mine, uh, Aaron Offenheim, actually a student from Simon Fraser University where Murray Schaefer, Barry Truex, all these people that Hildegard Westerkamp who were involved with the soundscape ecology movement in the, from the start, he studied there and we were very active uh, collaborators around field recording around the sounds. So he gave me this recording and said, you're going to love this and I have never heard under the CI sounds. And I was just struck. Uh, so this is, this is what made me write this piece. The following is a natural sequence of underwater sound after recorded during the spring port ship season the very name is Carbates. The recording was made from the edge of the past shore ice. The hydrophone was at a depth of 30 feet. It was a flat convey so that water noise is at a minimum. Instruments. 
that, that are used for scientific um, analysis. And this connects us again. I want to uh, I want to reiterate what Matthew is saying that we're using uh, bridges to connect science to music and derive music from that. And I have a there's a composer that I think that, that has been very under uh, represented that has not been shown enough to the world that has done a huge amount of work on cultures around the world so like connecting with peoples from the Polynesian islands and peoples from Asia from the Far East uh, also peoples in the American continent in South America North America and he's a linguist and he is known also as a zoo musicologist his name is Francois Bernard Mach He's um, actually, he was, uh, he was, let's say, cohort of uh, Senakis when, when Senakis was studying with uh, Oliver Messian, who was a passionate uh, ornithologist. He would just go and transcribe by hand. But before he started doing the recordings, he would transcribe by hand. Like, I think he has a collection like of 750 bird songs uh, just to transcribe and score. And a lot of his scores use those. So, Mosh said that he's trying to bring together poetics and theory and to show the advantages that there are in advancing an aesthetic project on the basis of a harmony with natural data. So, harmony with natural data. That is natural data. That is shown as natural data. So, that is what, what I was working on when I was thinking of this piece. So, this, this is one of the, one of the bearded seal calls, AL1I, and this is the second version of it. So this is that one that I said that was pretty broad in the range of, uh, of frequencies. So we have this sweep going up, starting from a high E, and then it just goes descending all the way from second five, we have the number of the seconds here, so this is second five, 10, 15, 20, and each thick bar is the mark of a second, so it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. So what I wanted to do was to have a very detailed description. So using notation, musical notation, not, not only as a prescribing tool, but as a descriptive tool. So this, this is working as two, from two fronts. In this case, it's just purely descriptive. And I'm trying to, to understand, first understand, and then just to have this as musical documentation, what is happening with the pitch world of bearded seals? What can we learn from them? And it's a highly complex pitch world. Like, I mean, our, our pitch world in the Western musical tuning system would be the equivalent, I don't know, like most of you are very young to have played with a Nintendo 8-bit uh, console, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, like the, the resolution of, of, of our, I mean, I don't mean to say that musical, and musical instruments in the Western culture are that low resolution, but in comparison to nature, that's how it feels like. Uh, the tuning system in nature is just completely broader. I mean, it's like beyond, beyond our reach, actually. So this is just like a pale reflection of what bearded seals are doing. But still, I, I want to try to get close to that. So let's hear this call. Any idea of what uh, what's the range that 
the seals can hear. I know it's not exactly what you what you're doing, but in a way, you know, they're making all these noises and do they hear the full range of what they do or do we have an idea about I have not I don't have the answer to that, but to me it just from a I guess evolutionary perspective, and I'm not a scientist, but I'm guessing that if they can make those sounds, they can hear those sounds. I, but I'm I'm not sure. But it's it's a great question. Um, also, how far they can hear, right? I mean, how like how far they can hear the, the sound of a seal that is like how many kilometers away. Um, so, what I I'm just got a oh, question sorry. about yeah. um, the biology <laughs> of the. It's a good question. So, Kupchuk is the Inuit name for bearded seal in uh, Northern Quebec. The Inuit name for being Kupchuk so is for bearded seal. Oh, for bearded seal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they're a lonesome seal. Right? So, they don't yeah. congregate yeah. as much as the other types of seals do. I know there's probably more talented hunters here, but I have spent time on the ice and seen. Um, how they operate. And it relates to that question just there, the range. Because they tend to be lonesome creatures, I dare say that their sounds are projecting perhaps further than other seals in the range. Um, and the other thing about the bearded seal of biology, which might be of interest, is that the bearded seal skins were used for umiats, for boats, uh, for tents and other things. And my mind's just ticking over, obviously, creatively, <laughs> as I hear you speak. But it'd be interesting, for instance, the sound of the beard is your skin um, mm -hmm. as it's going through the water. Umiak is a large seal skin boat, uh, a women's boat, if you like, for, for, um, for taking you know, 20, 30 people. So um, it's amazing engineering. But again, that's a different type of sound that would be coming, obviously. Ceased form of it. The sound of the skin of the seal just right. gliding through the water. And seal skin tents <coughs> were largely made out of bearded seals. So I it's guess it's just cool. expanding the vocabulary of the sounds you've got here, it's just manifesting different Yeah. Yeah, like reflecting on the on on the seal as the instrument that's creating that that sound, right? Right, like, yeah. Different components of the but what I'm getting at is that you've got the hunters in the boat and they're listening to that sound in wow, against yeah. the water. I think you, you, you should be a composer. I'm not a musician, but I'm just, a, the I just think that the understanding of the biology of the animal yeah. could perhaps help tap into some of the things that you're getting at. Yeah. Getting my mind going. That's very helpful. Thank you. Well, oh, sorry. First, and then have another one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just listening to you guys talk, and I'm like, man, I don't want to fly a microphone, and I want to like write a song about mushrooms. There's so many different sounds for mushing. Um, or even like the first song you played with the ice, that kind of felt familiar in being in the hall of a wooden boat.
And also, in addition to what Matthew's saying, that like the entry level is so feasible by these, by, and on these days that just to add, to add to that, there's also the software that you can use for, you know, just, there's a, 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 a SD card that you just connect to your computer, and then you have these free online, free editors that you can download, and you can work on your sounds and make a collage, and, and then even look at the sonograms. Um, some of them are free, some of them are not free, but, but definitely. There's nothing that we've shown so far that you could do like with that particular one. There's nothing that really, this, you could download free versions of every software we're using and do all that stuff, really. Right. It's, it's I really, very accessible in that respect. I guess it's second tradition. I, I really wanted to show like the, okay. like the sphere, the sphere, the sphere software instead yeah. of the audio software. No, you should show what you're doing. Because the sphere is uh, it's free in yeah. audio sculpt. It's not, but but they're used to, to show spectrographs of the yeah. of the of the of the sounds. So this is this is the sound. This is the, the spectrogram that that derived from the sound that we just heard and we saw the notation for. So I don't know if you can see the similarities between each, but there's like that I pointed out in the in the in the in the score, in the in the part for the L A L one I, how we have a initial ascent, and then once it reaches that top, sweeps down, and just gradually fluctuates, undulating, um, rising and, and and lowering until around second forty five. So you can see that here. It's a very uh, visual friendly tool. Um, so, this is what I use for pieces of this sort. I'm going to play one once, once again. See how the volume is. Sure that the sound that you're hearing is exactly where you're 
where you're pointing. And so in this case where I'm pointing, if you see the upper right hand of the screen, right here, it says 750 hertz. So, and, and this gives you an approximation. It tells you that it's F sharp 5. The problem with this software is that it's, it's not F sharp. So it, it's just, it's quantizing it to F sharp, F sharp 5. But what I try to do is to get a better resolution of that. So I know that it is 750 hertz. So then, this is a patch that um, Ted Coffey, a professor here, um, made. So this is simple. I mean, most people uh, that are working with quantizing design these kinds of patches. Um, but I happened to be working on this piece when he told me, oh, I have this patch that is going to be useful. So I type in here 750 hertz, and it's going to round it up to more um, subtle divisions of the tone. So in this case, it's, I'm quite quantizing it to eighths of the tone if I go to 0. 0.25. So 0. 0.5, 0. 0.5 is, is a quarter of a tone. I'm not, I'm not going to go into too many details about that, but just so that you know that, um, and point, so, so from F, F to F sharp, there's a, a half of a tone. Between F and F sharp, you can have a division of that micro interval of a half of a, of a quarter of a tone, an eighth of a tone, or a sixteenth of a tone. So in this case, I'm just going to the resolution of eighths of a tone, which is already a very, um, very precise tuning that the string quartet can do. So, like, very, very um, capable musicians um, can, can, can actually tune to that kind of subtlety. So I'm trying to explore all this world with, um, with, this, uh, with, with this piece. So this is kind of how it looks, but like the guts of the process. I'm writing all of these hertz. That, 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 are, that I'm hearing based on the sonogram that I'm analyzing, and, and then I am quantizing them in that, in that software so that I can know exactly, okay, this is a, an F quarter sharp, this is an F eight tone sharp, etc. So, I'm going to show next an example of another call. We may want to turn it. Oh, actually, it's good. That's a good call. Just to 
see, just so that you can see the different combinations of the calls and how I'm using the calls as material just to uh, use a collage of those calls to recreate this environment that drew me into this world that I played at the beginning of the talk. Well, since you heard that already, I'm going to go. Thank you. 